welcome to Withenshaw Hall. Um, the hall uh, was damaged in a arson attack uh, in uh, early 2016 and following that we um, undertook three years of uh, work to consolidate the, um, the damage, uh, dry the building out and then um, repair it uh, over a number of phases. Um, so now that all of the work is complete um, we thought we'd give everybody a virtual tour of the building. Externally, um, the, um, the hall lost um, its roof entirely in the centre and there's quite a lot of damage to, uh, to the sides as well. The whole hall has been re -roofed. But as part of that, a, um, a temporary roof was put over the hall to allow it to dry out and those repairs to be uh, undertaken. The, the attic space here and the ceiling of the room below were actually saved by the um, inappropriate materials that were already at the building. So when the hall was refurbished in the 1950s, um, a concrete tiled roof was installed on the main hall. Um, and whilst this was inappropriate and the conservation plan that we'd written um, had called for these uh, concrete tiles to be removed and replaced, um, when it came to the fire, these tiles shattered on the roof as the um, fire service poured water onto the building and came down in small chunks and landed on this um, walkway um, which has now been replaced but there was a walkway here before um, and that saved the ceiling of the roof below and stopped the building from collapsing in on itself. So at the far end here you can see the, the north gable which was completely dismantled uh, and uh, brick by brick, every brick was numbered um, so that they went back in the right positions um, and uh, the timbers were repaired and, and it was um, reconstructed. So here we are in the, uh, the main hall on the first floor level where the room was completely gutted by the fire. Um, there's been a range of different um, conservation uh, repairs on this room to bring it back to its former glory. So to start with, the, um, the ceiling was very heavily damaged. Uh, many of the features on the ceiling were, were lost. Um, and the uh, the lime plastered ceiling was actually baked as though it was in an oven. Um, so it changed its chemical properties and um, calcified. Um, so uh, the ceiling has been uh, repaired. It's been uh, mechanically fixed back to the ceiling joists um, throughout um, and uh, and then the paint has been stripped from uh, from its surfaces and been redecorated so that it looks just as good as it did the day before the fire. So the timber piling that uh, runs around the rest of the room was very heavily damaged at high level uh, where the heat of the fire charred the, uh, the timber. So it's incredibly dark in one corner of the room uh, as the fire was on the opposite side and then as it runs round it's, um, it's less damaged uh, and at low level there's almost no damage at all um, but all of the, the, this timber panelling was basically saved by the modern varnish which had been applied uh, in recent years uh, which blistered on the surface and protected the timber panelling below this blistered varnish was very carefully removed using solvents. Um, this would all remained in situ um, uh, so that we could uh, uh, repair it. Uh, so the, the, solvent, uh, the solvent lifted the varnish off the surfaces and then we've been very carefully uh, cleaned back and repolished. And, and it's quite amazing really because all of this interest, interest in marketry that you can see in here wasn't visible even before the fire because 
the layers of varnish had hidden it away and it, it was all just presented as very dark wood. So it's wonderful to see all of these details coming out. So um, this wall um, is actually decorated with um, a mural which uh, is as old as the hall itself. Uh, when the hall was originally built, um, the, the family aspired to be as, um, uh, as affluent as the neighbours, uh, but they couldn't afford to put timber panelling in this room. So in a, in a beautifully naive way, they painted these squares on the walls to replicate the idea of timber panelling. And um, whilst this wall has been uh, very uh, delicately conserved to keep these uh, panel uh, paintings uh, at a high level, it had a very detailed cornice decoration, which had uh, more coats of arms uh, of the family and, uh, and, and celebrated more marriages with, with other families. Uh, but unfortunately, that was lost almost entirely because of the heat of the fire at high level within the room. So in this corner of the room, the, uh, the bay here is where the fire uh, came through and created the most damage. Uh, the fire started uh, below in, in, the, uh, in the entrance lobby and worked its way up through this bay and up into the, uh, the attic space above. The, um, the ceiling over here is actually the only original decorative ceiling or was the only original decorative ceiling in, uh, in the hall uh, and was completely destroyed in the fire. So this is a replica. Um, we were very lucky that we'd taken record photographs when we did the um, conservation plan 10 years before the fire uh, and we used the photographs from uh, within the gazetteer to replicate uh, the ceiling as well as the stained glass window the um, the window there uh, melted in the fire and it was just a, um, a puddle of lead and glass on the doorstep um, and, and that has been uh, completely re recreated again from record photographs when the glass conservator had studied the artistry of the other heraldic windows and got to know the way that the, the original artists had created the windows. Um, so it's a very honest replica. Um, and at the bottom, in tiny handwriting, it's got an inscription to record um, who repaired, uh, recreated the window and that it was done after the fire. The carved joinery, um, such as the, uh, the benches here, have been recreated. Um, again, they were lost in the fire. So these lion's paw um, uh, feet to the, uh, to the benches uh, are, are recreated carvings, but some of them weren't as damaged as others. So there are still original lion's paws in the shadows at the back, which are a little bit charred and damaged, but the um, the ones that are presented at the front, which are easy to see, are, um, are the new uh, recreated carvings. The um, Heraldic glass windows in this room um, are uh, uh, of an age uh, that, that is old as, as the building itself and tell the story of the Tatton family that, that lived here and the marriages with the other great families of the area. Um, so the, these uh, windows were um, very significant and really tell the story of the hall. Um, they were very heavily damaged in the fire. These have all been removed um, and taken away to a glass conservator um, and have been uh, repaired. Um, some of the glass has been replaced and they've been reframed in a, a bronze frame and they now sit inside of the actual window. So they have protective conservation glazing externally 
new uh, leaded glass windows which protect them from the weather but they sit in the positions that they were before. Okay, so here we are in the main hall at ground floor level. Um, this room was quite deceptive after the fire because in the uh, days after the fire, it looked absolutely fine other than water dripping out of the centre of the chandelier. There was no real uh, signs of, of water damage. But as the water that had been put onto the roof uh, worked its way through the building, um, it became clear that uh, there was quite a lot of damage behind the scenes in this room. It's strange to think that actually there was more water damage in the weeks after the fire from torrential rain than there was from the fire service, who were expertly put just enough water on the building to uh, extinguish the fire without causing significant damage. But as the rainwater worked its way into the structure, the walls here started to blister. Um, uh, historically, they'd been painted with a varnish and a modern paint, which was holding all of the water back. And huge pop marks appeared, which, uh, when when punctured, actually squirted water out. It's quite like odd. Um, so all the paint had to be removed from the room. All the tin panelling was taken off the walls in here uh, and kept in the same environment, kept in this room, but it was very wet behind it. Uh, and it actually had an outbreak of significant mold. So we had to uh, clean all of the timber panelling of mold. And again, as we did uh, on the upper floors, uh, modern Varnishes were removed from all of the cinema panelling and had gone back to a natural wax finish. So once redecorated, the room is brought back to its former glory. Following the fire, the building obviously um, was at risk. Um, with the insurance money and with uh, additional investment, we were able to engage um, buttress and a bit the builders to come in and do the, the repair, which is to be fair, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's better than it was before the fire. It's given us an opportunity to bring new life into the building. It gives us the opportunity to do something that will make sure that this building is around for people to enjoy for many, many, many years to come. Um, and it could be a really important part of this community again. It's certainly a really important part of the park. It's a brilliant visitor attraction. People have got really strong memories and really fond memories of having their weddings or their parties and celebrations here. We've got family links in our local community. It's a really, really important part of Withenshaw. There's a lot of local pride attached to this building and it's brilliant that we can carry it forward and take it forward. It's, it's in a much better state than it's, it's been for years. So we're almost lucky.